In today's video, we're going to see how using cell phones in self-defense situations are never even thought of by most people and how the use of them may keep you out of jail right after the channel intro. Remember, you are ultimately responsible for protecting yourself and for providing for yourself. Live your life with honor and integrity and always be the wolf hunter. Don't be the sheep and never be the wolf. Welcome to this community. I'm an avid prepper, an oath keeper, and I'm certified to teach firearms and the use of deadly force through my state's police academy. If you want to learn true prepping skills and how to protect yourself without getting arrested, then please subscribe to this channel. Now towards the end of this video, I'm going to show some video scenarios to show what I'm trying to convey in this video. But first, here are some pointers to help understand how all of this can help keep you out of jail or prison. First, so many people forget that most of them have a great evidence tool with them almost all of the time, and that being their cell phone and the video camera that's on it. So many times the police get dispatched to a fight or a disturbance, and when the police get there, then they usually start getting conflicting statements from those involved, and then the cops have to try to figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. But if the good guy has captured most of the disturbance on his or her cell phone, then the cops will see pretty quickly who was in the right and who was in the wrong. Now let me preface all that by saying this. If you feel like you're actually about to get assaulted or to have the possibility of getting injured, I would consider actually calling 911 instead of trying to videotape with your phone. But one thing I've noticed is that people who are trying to start a fight have a tendency to start calming down once they know they're being videotaped. Of course, this is not 100% true every time, but I've noticed that more times than not, the agitator will run his mouth for a few more moments to continue acting the part of a tough guy, but usually he'll start slowly backing down and then just leave. Now here's the point of this video. If you feel like there's a possibility that danger could happen, but you don't feel like it's enough to actually call the police yet, then that's a good time to start videotaping on your phone to capture anything that could possibly go down, especially if you can't quickly remove yourself out of that situation. And then you can always just delete that video once you're no longer in that potentially dangerous situation if nothing does go down. And you don't have to make it obvious that you are videotaping if you don't want to. You can always just have your phone out and videotaping and acting like you're using it. Or you can just tuck it in your pocket with just the camera lens peeking out. But just remember, if you videotape and something does go down, then there's a possibility that the police on the scene, the prosecutor, a judge, or a jury might end up watching your video. And also remember that videos are one dimensional and they don't always capture everything. So building articulation as the camera rolls may be helpful to you. What I mean is that saying out loud, saying out loud just loud enough for your camera to pick up, but saying out loud of what you're perceiving or what you're feeling at that time may really help your case when the police arrive or should you end up in criminal or civil court. Articulating your mindset may help cover what's missing in the video and will also help to give the police, the judge, and the jury to understand why you did what you did should it come to that. Also too, remember this. I've said this numerous times in other videos and I'll say it again. While our brains can take in and enormous amount of information, it just takes time for our brains to actually process all of that information. So if you have a sudden, high stress, life or death situation happen, being able to view that video before giving a statement to the police may actually help for you and your attorney to draft up your official statement. And hopefully your attorney has made sure that you have had two nights of actual sleep before giving a statement after you've been forced to use deadly force to protect yourself. Now real quick before I show you the video examples of using your cell phone in a self-defense situation. First, please excuse our bad acting. We're not actors and we didn't rehearse these scenes a dozen times first. And second, please excuse our lack of props and scene locations. We had a backyard to work with here and only part of an afternoon to shoot several videos. And this scenario is supposed to actually take place in a parking garage. And of course, it's actually taking place in a backyard. 
So let's set the stage for the first video I'm going to show you. And this video is just so that you can see the actual story of what happened. And the situation is, is that a guy is walking in a parking garage to reach his car. And he sees a guy hanging out that makes him feel uneasy. Now it's not uneasy enough for him to turn around and abandon trying to reach his car, but just enough for him to keep an eye on the guy. So again, this first video is not an example of what to do with your cell phone. It's just a video to give you the full story of the scenario and how using a cell phone could help the good guy out in the deadly use of force situation that ends up happening. Nine one one. I need help. Man just shot me. I don't know. I don't know why he just came up to me in the parking lot. Uh, white guy. Black shirt. Black pants. Wearing a hat. Uh, please hurry. Uh, Now, if you thought it was stupid that I had the bad guy calling the police after he was shot, I must warn you to think again. Many bad guys, if they don't die from the gunshots, many bad guys will try to play the victim to the police. And remember that the vast majority of people don't die from handgun rounds, so they end up seeking help after they've been shot. The good guys tell what really happened, and then the bad guys tell a lie to try to save their own butts. Now we're going to show the situation if the good guy had decided to go ahead and use his cell phone to capture the incident just in case something happens. But in this video example, the good guy doesn't articulate his thoughts or his concerns. He just simply pulls out his phone and hits record as he comes closer to the uneasy situation. Now I have to warn you, I purposely held the cell phone like most people do when they make contact with another person. Most people don't keep their cell phone perfectly trained on the other person. When action begins happening, most people's train of thought leaves their cell phone and goes towards the other person. So I purposely didn't make the video perfect. I made the video go down how I see that they many times go down when the actual person who's facing the true danger ends up handling their cell phone. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't have any money. Ah! Okay, so we first saw the video that showed the whole story. How the bad guy pulled a knife on the good guy. How the good guy shot the bad guy. How the bad guy runs off and ditches his knife and then plays victim to the cops. And now since you've also seen the video from the good guy's phone, where he only videotaped the incident and didn't articulate his thoughts leading up to the confrontation. And after having seen the video he captured on his cell phone, can you see how his video, even though it only tells a part of the story, could really help out the good guy when the cops show up? So let's now take a look at the same video captured on the same good guy's cell phone, but this time the good guy will be articulating his thoughts on the cell phone leading up to the confrontation to help fill in the rest of the story of what the video misses. Man, this guy's making me kind of nervous. I really wish there was a different way I could get to my car. Man, he's really making me uncomfortable. I don't see any other way I can reach my car though in this parking garage. Dollar and get off of you. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, I don't have it. Ah! <laughs> Did he just pulled a knife on me? I shot him. I gotta call 911. So, can you see now how capturing at least some of the event on video would really help the good guy out? How it would blow the bad guy story out of the water that he was just minding his own business and the good guy just shot him for no reason. 
And can you see how the good guy's articulation to the cell phone would help even better to show a judge and a jury his frame of mind before the incident even went down? How the bad guy made him uneasy, how he wished he could take a different route, and how he was being cordial and unaggressive before the shooting took place. And if this went to court, could you see how a jury would be more apt to buy the good guy's story of what happened and not the bad guy's? So to help clarify a little of what would go down after a self-defense shooting like this, when the cops show up and they're receiving two different stories, both people will be held or detained until the cops sort it all out. The bad guy will go to the hospital's lockup area and be chained to a hospital bed once he's out of surgery, and the good guy will be taken to the police department and questioned until the incident becomes more clear. And in a case like this, the good guy's video on his cell phone will make it a lot sooner that he'll be going home and pretty much guarantee that he'll never see the inside of a jail cell unless he lives in an area that hates people that defends themselves. Okay, so hopefully these skits helped show you how using your cell phone's video can really help you out should you think something could possibly go down and also how articulating your state of mind can really help fill in the gaps of what isn't captured on video. And that's something that I teach our officers in our regular in-service training classes. I teach them that when they turn on their body cams, when they're approaching a traffic stop or they get dispatched to that suspicious person behind a business at three in the morning run, I teach them to say out loud, if possible, but I teach them to say out loud what they're thinking and perceiving and seeing as they enter that situation. But again, when you're verbalizing your thoughts and your concerns and your state of mind, that's just another layer of painting that whole picture that you're wanting to paint for the judge or the jury or whoever will be judging your actions. And also, this was just one scenario that was quickly thought up by us while shooting numerous different videos in one day. If we had had the time, we probably would have been able to think of better scenarios. And last but not least, if you witness somebody else getting hurt or injured, for goodness sake, put your darn cell phone away and help. Unless you decide that getting involved is going to get you seriously hurt, then please quit trying to be the next Gerardo Rivera and actually help people. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.